One of the ways that we can tell that we're using a formula correctly is by using a technique called unit analysis. And this is what unit analysis says, essentially. When we're manipulating an expression, the units act like variables. What does that mean? Well, it means in adding and subtracting, we can only combine terms with like units. And we've seen this before, right? Five minutes plus six minutes is 11 minutes. But five minutes plus six seconds, well, that's just five minutes and six seconds. Right, we can't combine those because they have different units. When we're multiplying, we just multiply the units together. So for example, two feet times three feet is six square feet. Or as another example, if we take 12 miles per hour times 4 hours, well, that's 48 miles per hour times hours over 1. The hours cancel out, just like a factor of the numerator and denominator. And we're left with 48 miles. So in multiplying, we just multiply the units. In dividing, we divide the units. So if we take 35 square feet divided by 7 feet, well, 35 divided by 7 is 5. And then divide the units, square feet, that's feet times feet divided by feet, we're left with just five feet. Or, in another example, if someone types 300 words in 15 minutes, then 300 divided by 15 may be a job for our calculator. That's 20 and then words over minutes. Of course, there's nothing we can cancel there. We're just left with words per minute. We saw all of this informally when we were just working with units as words. But now that we have an understanding of variables, we can actually make use of this. Let's see this in action. Let's say we're plugging in to the following formula. Suppose we're plugging into the formula d equals r times t, where d is distance, r is rate, and t is time. Suppose we're plugging in from the following story. We're told that James drives 200 miles at 50 miles per hour, and we're asked, how long does it take him? And let's suppose for a moment that we did not remember exactly how this formula goes. I don't remember which two things I multiply together. And let's say I make a mistake. Let's say I decide that I want to use time as rate times distance. So that means I'll, to find my time, I'll take my 50 miles per hour times my 200 miles. And so I go ahead and multiply 50 times 200, 10, and then three zeros. But then I look at my units. I have miles over hours times miles over 1, 
10,000 miles squared over hours. And I think, wait a minute, I don't measure time in miles squared over hours. I want my answer to be in hours, don't I? Okay, I think, let's try this again. Maybe it's the other way around. Maybe it's distance is rate times time. Right, so my distance, 200 miles, is my rate, 50 miles per hour, times my time. OK. So that 50 miles per hour, I need to, I need to divide by that. So let's see, I'm dividing by 50 over 1 miles over hours. That's like multiplying by 1 over 50 hours over miles. So I multiply by that on both sides. So 1 over 50 hours over miles times 200 miles over 1 is 1 over 50 hours over miles times 50 miles over hours times t. 1 50th and 50 cancel out. Hours over miles and miles over hours cancels out. I'm just left with T on the right. 1 over 50 times 200. That's 4. And then miles in the numerator cancels out miles in the denominator. And I'm just left with 4 hours. And that makes sense. I really do measure time in hours. So the answer to my question is it takes four hours. But the big thing I want you to notice here is that following the units through the problem very clearly showed me that I was making a mistake when I plugged into my formula incorrectly.